Well, the tying run is at second. The run that would win the World Series is at first, and Joe Carter is the batter. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Well hit down the left field line. Way back in. Gone. Joe Carter with a three-run homer. The winners and still world champions, the Toronto Blue Jays. Good morning. Today we'll be investigating projectile motion, and we're going to start off with a baseball question. A ball has a speed of 108 kilometers an hour, 35 degree angle, with respect to the horizontal. Hit one meter above the ground, and it's hit by a bat. A person is patrolling the outfield approximately 60 meters from where the ball was hit. And the person expects to make the catch with his glove placed about one meter above the ground. The ball is going to land somewhere behind the person's initial starting position. How far does the person have to move to make the catch? So here's the basic diagram. The ball is going to be hit at a specific angle. It's going to land. And ultimately, we're solving for the range or the distance that this ball is going to travel. This is a classic physics problem. So let's start off by dissecting this question. A ball has a speed of 108 kilometers per hour, 35 degree angle. And so what does that look like? Well, we draw the velocity vector. We label it 108 kilometers an hour. Or 30 meters per second. Remember, to convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second, we divide by 3.6. Now we draw an x and a y direction. Why do we do this? Well, in the x direction, we're assuming no forces. In the y direction, we're assuming there's only one force, the force of gravity. And we break apart the velocity vector into its x and y components. We label the 35 degree angle. There's vx, and there's v1y. So why the different subscripts? This is such a small point in physics. But why did I not say V1X? Why did I just write down VX? Why was I so specific by saying V1Y? Well, we know in the X direction, the velocity is constant. So there is no point to writing V1 or V2. The velocity doesn't change. In the y direction, however, the velocity does change. It changes because of gravity. The ball, when it's going upwards, it's going to slow down. Then when it starts to fall downwards, it's going to speed up. Clearly, in the y direction, the velocity changes. That's why we need to use the one subscript, meaning initial velocity, in the y direction. All right. Pause the video right now. Please use some trigonometry to solve for Vx and V1y. Hopefully you've tried this already. To get Vx, we're going to use the cosine ratio being adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine 35 degrees is Vx, which is the adjacent over 30 meters per second, which is the hypotenuse. Cross multiplying, we end up with this value for Vx. And there it is. For the y component of the vector, v1y, we're going to use the sine ratio. Sine 35 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, v1y over 30. Cross multiplying, and there's v1y. And there it is labeled. Next, the ball is hit one meter above the ground, and then it's caught one meter above the ground. And so that's what that looks like. One meter it's hit above the ground and it's caught one meter above the ground. And that's the question. How far does the person have to move to make the catch? So that's our goal. To get that distance there where I've labeled it with the question mark. And so to do this we have to get distance in the x direction or as mentioned at the very beginning of the question we have to get the range. And so starting off with our x direction, 
We know in the x direction it's constant speed. That's because there are no forces, or we are assuming anyways that there are no forces acting in the x direction. We can use this simple equation. And substituting, we notice there's a problem. We don't know the time. Often in these projectile motion questions, we have to use both directions to solve the ultimate goal. So far, we haven't used the y direction. So let's see what we can learn from the y direction. And so we note the y direction here. We know the v1, 17.207 meters per second in the upwards direction. Here's our acceleration and our displacement. Notice our displacement is zero. Why is the displacement zero? Well, at the very beginning, the ball is hit one meter above the ground. At the very end of the trip for this ball, the ball is caught one meter above the ground. So it's hit one meter above the ground. It's caught one meter above the ground. Its displacement in the y direction is zero. Its final position and its initial position in the y direction are the same. So its displacement is zero. All right, there's our equation we're going to use. Please pause the video and solve that equation now. We're solving for time. Okay, I hope you work through the math. Substituting the displacement, the initial velocity, and the acceleration. Multiplying half of 9.8. Rearranging the equation. Canceling out one of the times. And dividing by 4.9, we end up with this time. What does this time mean? It means that right after the ball was hit, the ball will stay in the air for exactly 3.511 seconds before it's caught by the person in the outfield. That's what that time means. It's the time of flight. And so now we're going to substitute that time back into the equation for the x direction and solve for distance. And so substituting and cross multiplying, we end up with 86.3 meters. And so this ball will travel 86.3 meters from where it was originally hit. Taking the difference of 86.3 meters and 60 meters, the person will have to travel 26.3 meters to catch the ball. Our next example. A projectile is launched from a point on level ground and has a speed of 3 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. Which of the following statements is not true? So this is a multiple choice question. Which of the following statements is not true? A. Horizontal component of velocity is constant. B. At maximum height, the vertical component of velocity is zero. C, the path of the projectile is parabolic. Or D, the initial horizontal component of velocity and the initial vertical component of velocity are equal to half the initial velocity. Please pause the video and give this some thought. Okay, I hope you've tried this. Now before we get to the answer, I want to discuss this part. C. Is the path of the projectile parabolic? Let's see. And so analyzing this video, extracting frames every 0.1 seconds, we can recreate this image. And clearly, it looks like it's a parabola. But I think we could find a more exciting demonstration showing that, in fact, projectile motion is parabolic when there is no drag. Let's see. Does it go in? I think we all know the answer to that. Ooh. 
wonderful parabolic motion. And so yes, based on the two examples you just saw, the path of the projectile is clearly parabolic when there is no drag. And so the answer is D. The initial horizontal component of velocity and the initial vertical component of velocity are equal to half the initial velocity. This is not true. Why is that? Well, here's the vector, and I'd like you to show this. I'd like you to show this as an example. You're going to see, in fact, that it's not half the value. And our final example today. A cannon makes an angle greater than 20 degrees with the horizontal and is placed on top of a cliff, which is 25 meters high. The cannonball is launched with an unknown velocity. We're going to assume the acceleration due to gravity is negative 10, not 9.8, just to simplify the math. And lands 173.205 meters from the base of the cliff, 5,000 milliseconds later. Calculate the components of the initial launch velocity, the launch speed, and launch angle. Let's focus on A. So this is the diagram that we have. And the question is, what is that launch velocity? So we need to break this apart once again into an x and a y direction. And we need to label the vx and the v1y for this vector. So step one, we're going to solve for vx. Step two, we're going to solve for v1y. And step three, once we have vx and v1y, Pythagorean theorem will give us v for the speed. Please pause the video now and see how far you can get with this question. All right, vx. Well, we need to know the distance. The distance was listed as 173.205 meters. And for the x direction, we can use a simple formula. Why is that? There is no acceleration in the x direction. Why is that? There is an assumption of no forces, in other words, no drag, acting in the x direction. Remember the ball takes five seconds to land, and that's why we're using five seconds in our equation. Step two, solve for V1Y. Well, our displacement is 25 meters. How do we know that? Well, the ball drops, ultimately, 25 meters below from where it started. There's the mathematics involved, and there's V1Y, 20 meters per second. So labeling that in our triangle, step three, solve for speed. There's our triangle. Here's Pythagorean theorem. And there's our answer, 40 meters per second. The launch angle, we're going to use opposite over adjacent, which is the tangent. Opposite is 20, adjacent is 34.641, and there's our launch angle, 30 degrees. Find the final components of velocity of the cannibal, final speed, and final angle just before it hits the ground. Please review the description of this video for that answer for B. And finally, C. Find the maximum height of the cannonball. Well, to get maximum height, we're going to have to look at information in the y direction. And that's what we're looking for. That distance drawn there. Remember, at maximum height, the velocity in the y direction is zero. This is very important that you note that. Still moving in the x direction, but in the y direction, it's no longer moving upwards or downwards at peak height. All right, pause the video right now and see how far you can get with this. All right, so let's see. Let's see our variables. Well, there they are. We know v2y is zero. There's v1y and the acceleration. We're looking for the displacement. There's the equation we're going to use, a classic equation in physics. And there's the answer for displacement in the y direction for maximum height. There it is listed. And so I hope you've enjoyed part two of projectile motion. If you haven't already seen part one, it'll be very helpful to do that. Have a great day. Bye-bye.